Hi, I'm Al Brooks, and this is a bonus video on extreme scalping of the E-mini 15-second chart. I hope that you find it interesting. This video is an example of 10 consecutive scalps that I made today on a 15-second E-mini chart. Each bar is 15 seconds. Why did I choose to make this video? Well, I have two main reasons. First, charts are a record of rational human behavior, and that behavior is the same on all time frames, and therefore the concepts in my Brooks Trading course work on all time frames and in all markets. And second of all, I want to show that a good scalper can win a high percentage of the time, 80 or 90% of the trades. After the open today, I decided to record 10 scalps on a 15 second chart. I'm trading my real accounts on one computer and I'm recording this on a second computer using a simulated account in which I'm only trading a single contract. This is a first take. This is my first attempt at recording a 15 second chart and scalping. Coming into the day, I thought, well, maybe I'll try to see if I can scalp 10 times today and see how well I'll do. To keep it simple, I'm scalping only for a single point. Obviously, many of the trades would have been good for much more than a single point. This chart shows the first four trades. Down in the lower left, there are actually two trades there. I bought and I bought more lower. I scaled in. And then there's a third and a fourth trade later in the day. Remember, each bar is 15 seconds. So the bars happen quickly. And some of the trades as soon as I placed an order, within seconds, I got filled. The longest trade was maybe a few minutes. This is a video. This is the setup that I was using. This is TradeStation. In this brief video, I'm going to show trades one and two. It's actually one trade, and I scaled in one point lower. So there were two entries, so you can call it two trades. We have a very strong reversal up after a wedge top. When the market is that strongly up, it's going to go higher. And if it goes down, the first reversal down will fail. So I just went ahead and I bought at the market. And then I'll buy more, one point lower, using a limit order. Remember, the purpose of this video is not to teach how to trade. I just want to show that a person who scalps using standard techniques, the ones that I had in my course, can do pretty well. I place the limit order to buy more, one point lower. A reversal like this is either going to lead to a bull trend or a trading range. And if it's a trading range, I can buy more lower and it will come back to the top of the range at my original price. So I quickly, now I'm going to adjust my profit taking limit orders. I'm trying to get out break even on the first trade. And with a one point profit there, I just got filled. And this shows the two entries. I bought, and then I bought more lower, one point lower, and then I get out break even on the first trade and with a one point profit on the second trade. Trade number three. The market is rallying strongly, but we're starting to get some bear bars, so I might be able to scalp one point. I just placed a limit order selling at the top, and I already got filled within seconds of placing my order. And that shows that third trade up there in the upper right. This little video clip is a fourth trade. The rally has had three pushes up and we're starting to get some pullbacks. And therefore, I can make money buying a pullback or selling a rally. And in this particular case, I'm going to sell a rally. Bear bar. Closing on its low, I'll place a limit order to sell right around the low of that bar. I just got filled. It would be nice if it went straight down, but it's following three or four decent bull bars, so I may have to go sideways before it'll go down. If it goes above the top of that bear bar, I'll sell more, betting that we're starting to get pullbacks, and therefore we may enter a small trading range.
Each bar is 15 seconds, so they go by quickly. You don't have much time to make up your mind to do things. Entering with stops is hard because sometimes the bar grows or tick or two in the final second. So most of my orders are either at the market or with limit orders. Trading on a five minute chart, most traders are better off entering with stops. But if you're trading on a chart that is as quick as this, it's very difficult to enter with stops. We have a bear bar here, so we might be forming a lower high. On this chart, it would be a lower high major trend reversal. But a major trend reversal on the 15 second chart is a bar or two of a pullback on a five minute chart. Three little legs up after that bear bar, so it's a small wedge rally to a lower high double top. A bear bar closing on its low, so we should go down here and I should be able to make my scalp. I have a limit order to get out one point below my entry. You can see it on the left on the price ladder. I have a stop three points above. If the market starts to go up, I will sell more and I might raise or lower that stop depending on what the market does. Turning down, I should get filled. You can see on the left, on the price ladder, my limit order to buy back my short with a one point profit. And I just got filled. Actually, I have a third reason to make this video, and that's that there's a lot of interest in scalping. Many traders are interested in scalping because the risk per trade is small. But scalping only has a small risk if you trade well, because if you have a lot of small losses, all of a sudden you end up with a big loss. It's really important to remember that small reward relative to risk means bad risk reward, and that's only half of what you have to consider. You also have to consider probability. You can make money if you have bad risk reward, if you have a high enough winning percentage, and that's the key to scalping. You have to be able to make a lot of good decisions and you cannot make mistakes. And that's the problem for most traders. They cannot make enough good decisions fast enough and just a few mistakes is the difference between making money and losing money. Here are trades five and six. I'll show videos of that. I'm gonna buy with a limit order. Remember, when the market's on a bull trend, you can buy with a limit order, you can buy at the market. If it looks like it's starting to transition into a trading range, you can also sell, but it's better to be selling high. This is probably a bull flag. This does not look like a very strong reversal, and therefore we're probably going to try to get up to that measured move target. We had a double top, we broke below it, tested below the double top, and that created a measured move up, so we should get there. And it looks like we're going sideways instead of down, so it's reasonable to buy, betting that we'll get up there. And my profit-taking limit order is well below the measured move target, and I just got filled. And you can see now I have $188 profit. Trade number six, I'm going to sell with a limit order. We're starting to get pullbacks on the way up here. If you're selling in a reasonably strong bull trend, first of all, it's difficult to do it well. You have to be able to read the market well. And second, you have to sell really high. You want to be selling when the market is very strong, and preferably once you start to see a bear bar. So I just placed a limit order to get short, and I just got filled. It has not even gone below the low of that bar, and I'm already short just because it was a bare body. We've had a couple pullbacks in the past 20 bars or so. Therefore, a pretty good bare bar. We should get filled. And I just did.
So that was another one point scalp. Very quick, happened in less than a minute. And there it is right there. I sold and got filled with a one point scalp. Remember, I'm trying to keep things simple and I'm scalping for one point, but good scalpers would have held several of these trades for much more than one point. And as I said, I'm entering most of the time with limit orders or market orders. In fact, I think pretty much all day I did that. I have two trades on this slide. There's one on the left, that was trade number seven, and then on the right, trade number eight. And trade number seven, it was such a good trade that I decided to take it in my real accounts, and it was a distraction to have it here, so I ended up just getting out break even here on the simulated account. We have a wedge sell off and a pretty good reversal up with a higher low. So we're probably going to get a second leg up and therefore it's reasonable to buy, especially at the two bull bars. But as I said, I was concerned that we were getting a reasonable buy setup on the two minute chart, the five minute chart on the right. And I started focusing on my real accounts and this trade was a distraction on the simulated account. So I quickly decided to get out break even on this trade. Because there's a commission, even though I did not lose any ticks, there's a loss. Trade station counts it as a losing trade. Here are the trades so far today. The lines highlighted with blue are my entries and exits. I bought and I sold. The top two lines are the most recent. Trade number eight. It looks like we're breaking out of a bull flag and we're going to try to resume the bull trend. I'm going to enter with a limit order. I could just buy at the market. Chances are we're going to test the high. But in general, I like to buy with limit orders. I like to buy a little bit of a pullback if I can get it. I have a stop three points down. It's below the bars on the left of the screen, so you do not see the stop order. I just flipped over to a one minute chart because the tails were so prominent on the 15 second chart. I usually like to look at charts that don't have prominent tails. So here's back to the 15 second chart. You can see I'm long and you can see that red L1 at the top. That's my profit taking limit order. Trade station simulated accounts have algorithms and they decide whether you'd get filled at your limit order. So sometimes the market will hit my limit order and I'll get filled in the simulated trading. And most of the time, trade station is correct that if it hits the price and I get filled in trade station, I would be getting filled in my actual accounts as well. Now, the 15 second chart, that means four bars per minute, 240 bars an hour, times six hours and 45 minutes. So there are over a thousand bars a day. If you watch the 15 second chart all day long, there probably are at least a hundred reasonable setups. Now, very few people can trade like this, especially for more than an hour or two at a time. And most people would not enjoy doing it day after day, year after year. Your career is long and a person must make money and be happy. For most traders, swing trading on a five minute chart is a better choice. This is trade number nine. Now, is this going to be a bear trend reversal? Have we begun a bear trend or is this a pullback and a bull trend? We're getting a lot of bull bars on the way down, so it might be simply a bull flag, a pullback, and a bull trend. Sideways here for about six or seven bars, not falling quickly. We've got three little legs down in the past 10 bars here, so it's a small wedge. Many bears will take profits when they see a wedge sell off, and bulls will buy. So I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll buy. It might go down a little bit more, and if it does, I'll buy more lower. But right now I'm long. 
and my stop is three points below, and it's just below the bottom of the price ladder on the left. So far, it's not looking very good. I may have to buy more lower. The bulls need to get bull bars. If you look at the lower right chart, the five minute chart, it's a very strong bull trend and a bull bar at the top. That's a bad sell signal bar. The odds are we're going to go up. There'll be buyers below that sell signal bar on the five minute chart. Still channeling down, small pullback bear trend, but unlikely to go down a lot further. If it does go down, I'll buy more lower. Another bull bar, this one closing on its high. That's good for the bulls. That's a sign of aggressive buying right into the close of the bar. That's true on any time frame. Broke above the bull bar, broke above the moving average. The bulls need to get a bull bar closing above the moving average. That's a 10 bar exponential moving average, which is what I use when I scalp. For the bears, it's another low one sell signal, but at the bottom of a channel. On the higher time frames, this is probably a minor reversal. Also, we're spending a lot of time going sideways, a lot of sideways bars. And that is not very bearish. Bulls a little double bottom here. They need to break above the neckline, which is the high from three bars ago. Okay, there we go. Can the bulls get the bar to close on its high and above the moving average? Can they break above that neckline they just did? So this is looking good. Can we get two bull bars, three bull bars? Is the bull trend resuming? Here's a two minute chart, not a good buy after three bear bars, but after a whole bunch of bull bars, this is probably only a minor reversal down. Back to the 15 second chart. The bears are hoping that red bar is a reversal back down, a resumption of the bull trend. The bulls are hoping that bar is a pullback from the big bull bar. Here, another bull bar, so that's good. So it looks like we're trying to go up. Okay, I just got filled on my scalp. Here's the final trade. The bear's got a big breakout, but instead of going down, we're going sideways. So this could be a double bottom and then a resumption of the bull trend. We have a small double bottom about 10 bars ago, and this is a pullback testing that double bottom. It's common to have a double bottom and then a pullback that forms a slightly higher low, a double bottom pullback. Right now, it's basically a triangle or breakout mode. What's more likely? Are we going to continue down or are we reversing up? I'm willing to scale in lower. I have not yet bought, but I am looking to buy. Here we got a bull bar, another bull bar. So it's looking pretty good for the bulls. I just quickly clicked the limit order and got filled. Here's a five minute chart. We have an II, consecutive inside bars on the two minute chart. And it's a high two with the bar from four bars ago. So this looks pretty good for the bulls on the two minute chart and the five minute chart. It looks like I should be able to make a one point scalp on the 15 second chart. The bears want the breakout above the II, the consecutive inside bars. They want the breakout to fail, and they're hoping it becomes a bear flag. But we have that pretty good reversal up four bars ago at the moving average. It's about a 50% retracement of that series of bull bars, that strong rally. So I think the probability is we'll go up at least enough to make a one point scalp. We're down a couple ticks. You can see on the price ladder on the left. Down now three ticks. The yellow is where the market currently is. The blue is my entry. And then you can see my limit order, the gray box on top. You can see my stop order below $150 down, which is three points below. 
just in case it goes lower, I'm going to lower my stop. I want to give room. I may have to add on here. This is a two minute chart. The bears want to get a bear bar closing on its low. The bulls want anything other than a bear bar. Okay, the bears got a bear bar. It also shows some of the earlier trades right here, the two minute chart. Now, those two little bull inside bars, theoretically, the stop is one tick below the lower of the two bars. Theoretically, it's still on the buy above the II. And for the bears, it's a low one sell below that bear bar, but I would not take it. We're at the moving average. The bear closes just above the moving average, and we're on an II buy. So it's still more likely that we're going to try to go up. It doesn't have to go up to the high. I'm just trying to make one point. Getting an outside up bar, traded below the bear bar, and now trading up to the high of the bear bar and above the high of the bear bar. So outside up, that's good for the bulls. The odds are pretty good that I'll make my one point scalp. The more bullish this bar closes, the more likely the market's going to go up. So I'd like the bar to close on or near its high, and it would be better if it closed at the high of the bear bar or above that. If it does, then we'll probably go up to the high of the bull trend up there around 42.16. But I'm going to be getting out before that. I'm just trying to scalp for one point. Sideways, the market's still deciding. Is the bear trend going to continue down? Ah, on the five-minute chart, there's also an II, consecutive inside bars, both with bull bodies, breakout mode. So that's another buy signal. We had the two-minute II. We broke above it, and now we're triggering the five-minute II, so that further increases the probability that will go up. Here on the 15-second chart, we have three consecutive bull bars, and then a little pullback, a small high two at the moving average, which is a buy signal two bars ago. So it looks good for the bulls. And breakout just got filled. The top two blue lines are the most recent trade. And right now I'm at $376 after the 10 trades, $50 per trade, and then you subtract out commissions. You can see this is the most recent trade. Here's an equity curve of the 10 trades. The first trade, I got out break even, and then the second trade was part of the first trade. Remember, the first trade I bought, and I bought more one point lower. So trade number two, I'm up only one point, $50. And then trade number seven was also break even. Remember, I exited that early, even though it ended up being a profitable trade because I was concentrating on my real accounts. And at the end of 10 trades, there's a net profit of $376. Here's a performance summary. You can see the green at the top, net profit after commissions, $376. Creation calls the two break-even trades losers, even though they did not lose any points. They're losers because I had to pay a commission. So you can see I lost $2.40 on the trades. Here's the list of all the trades. Eight trades where I made one point and two trades where I get out break even. So an 80% winning percentage. I'm Al Brooks and I wanna thank you for watching this video. I hope that you found it interesting and useful.